Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another luncheon chat. So today is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Obviously, I'm at work and I'm going to sit here and have lunch with you guys again. So I hope you guys were able to check out my lunchtime short. You would know I'm having tuna. I'm having cucumbers. I'm having some Quest chips that I already opened <laughs> earlier. I'm having a Coke Zero right here. And I also have a couple of chicken wings that I took out of my refrigerator that was kind of left over and I just took them because nobody was eating them. And I had some cherries and I had some kiwi, which I already ate as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I hope you guys were able to check out my nighttime routine video. You would have seen me getting all this together if you did. So... And that is what I got going on right now. It is about one o'clock right now. And yeah, I'm ready to eat. I had my coffee this morning. And that's pretty much what I had. And I had my fruit. I ate my fruit this morning with my coffee. So that is what we are doing right now. All right, y'all, so that is what we're doing right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start eating. Yesterday, I um, said I didn't bring enough cucumbers. I made sure I bought enough cucumbers today. I just, yeah, they were so good yesterday. Mm. Really good. I actually had fun filming that little nighttime routine. It was fun. This is just a bowl of tuna that I have. Mmm. I'm gonna eat it with my quest chips. And that was like a a spare of the moment video because I was at work. Yesterday, and I was just sitting there thinking, I'm like, oh, you know, I think I want to film a nighttime routine. I didn't plan on filming it last night, but then I was like, you know what? I'm going home from work anyway. May as well do it. It's not going to be a big deal. And it was actually pretty easy to do. So I'm glad I actually did it. It's so funny because in your mind you're thinking like no one's going to want to look at that. But then I think I like to look at nighttime routines. I like to look at see what people do during the day or at night or whatever. So why not? So it's gonna be so hot here today. But I'm inside today, so <laughs> in the air condition. Work is going pretty good today. Pretty smooth day. Better than yesterday. I 
I have to work tomorrow and I'm off um, Thursday and Friday. So, looking forward to that. And then I think on, no, not I, I think I know, on Friday, I have to hand in my keys to my old place. Go take one final walk through, make sure we got everything, make sure we're not leaving anything behind because once you hand the keys in, that's it. You typically can't get that back in. I think that's how it works. So I want to make sure that we got everything out of that we need. We checked all the closets, everything that, you know. Not leaving anything behind. like you're kind of ending a chapter in your life and sometimes that's like bittersweet especially if it's a, ch a long chapter of your life like we were living there for nine years and I remember when I first moved there me and my kids were going through like a rough time and um they rented that apartment to me, not the one that I just moved. Well, it's the same complex, but it was a different apartment in that complex. And I remember they rented to me with no job. I had no job at the time. And they said to me, they were like, well, you know, we do do second chance renting or whatever, however they call it. And they said, you know, we'll rent it to you, the apartment, but you have to have six months rent up front. And um, circumstance, a situation happened where I actually had the six months rent up front. So when I moved into that apartment, I gave them like almost $7,000. And, um, and that was the only complex that did that for me, for me and my kids. And I gave them almost seven grand up front. And they were like, they gave me the keys and it was a, it was a nice apartment. And um, it was kind of liberating because I didn't have to worry about rent for almost seven months. And then like literally a month after we moved in, I got a job. So it's like the Lord just, the Lord just knows exactly what to do and when to do it. The Lord knows exactly what you need and they will provide it for you. And I rented that apartment when I was living in New York. Again, me and my kids were going through a rough time. And uh, I rented it unseen. I was in New York. The apartment was in Georgia. Went to that apartment unseen. And the lady was like, you know, I told her my situation. And she was like, you can have it. But, you know, this is the requirement. And I sent that cashier's check in. And she called me and she's like, it's yours. You can move in on this particular day. So, um, we got down in Georgia the day before we were supposed to move in. I had to go down to get my lights turned on at the lighting company. And we got down there the day before. And me and my kids stayed in a hotel that night, motel that night. And I got up that morning, the next morning, to move in. I went down to the light, the light company because when we, we took the bus from New York to Georgia. So, when we got to Georgia, it was too late to get to the lighting company. And... So we got the hotel, the motel. The next day, we took an Uber. It was a taxi, actually, from the motel to the lighting company. Just a few minutes away, wasn't that, wasn't that far. Got the lights and everything turned on. And then we took the taxi. And the taxi actually waited for me outside the lighting company till I was done. And they took me and my kids right to the, right to the apartment complex and signed the lease. And... That's all she wrote, and here it is nine years later, and we're just moving out. I think I felt a sense of security being there, and um, like we were finally kind of like stable in a way, and that's what took me so long to move was because I just felt like we're finally settled, we're finally stable, I don't have to worry about a place to live anymore, and 
you know, you're looking back like this was just, this was just a God, that place was a godsend, you know? So if you've ever been in a situation like that, you know, where you were helped tremendously, it's kind of like you just don't want to give it up. But at that point in my life, it served this purpose. And here it is, like almost 10 years later, my kids are adults. You know, I don't, I don't need to hold on to that anymore. So, and plus, like I said, the place is not the way it used to be. It's different management now, different people in that rental office. My God, I don't know if it would have worked out for me if those, if the people that are there now were there when I had to first live there. I don't know if I would have had the same outcome. So I'm so grateful, you know, for that. Um, those people that were like, yeah, you know, but this is the requirement. You have to have this much money and blah, blah, blah. And so it was just really, it was really easy. But now, like I said, it served this purpose. And now it's time to move on. And that was a two bedroom we had moved into. And me and my kids lived in that two bedroom for, I want to say four years, five years. And then I put in for a transfer to a different apartment, to a three bedroom in the same complex. And um, it was approved, I could go to the three bedroom. And then we lived in this three bedroom now for the last four years. And so now we're just, we're just moving out. So, it was really, like I said, it was, it was a godsend, but like I said, when something has served its purpose and it's time to move on, you'll know. You'll definitely know. And it's so funny because my son, for like the last, I don't know, three years, he's been asking me, you know, mom, when are we going to move? When are we going to move? When are we going to move? Because he knew that he saw that the place was actually like not being ran the same way and the property wasn't being kept up and they didn't do any upgrades to the apartment. Like if you needed something fixed, they would fix it, but they wouldn't come in and paint. They wouldn't do any of that. So they never kept it up, you know, they never, they'd stop doing like upgrades. They would at least paint once a year back in the day when I first got there and they stopped doing that. Um, you can get, I think your carpet's clean twice a year. They stopped doing that. So it was just like a lot of, like I said, the management changed. So a lot of things had changed. And my son's like, when are we moving? When are we moving? But I just kind of wasn't ready to let, let it go. And now this year I was like, okay, it's time. Let's just, we have, we have to go. that's what happened you know I know people are in a lot of situations where for some reason they can't move on from a situation and you never know what put them in that situation you know or, or why they're in that situation that they're in everybody has a story uh, as to why they ended up where they are in life. Everyone has a story. You know? And oftentimes, the story's not a pretty one. In other words, a single mom, like I was, trying to do the best that they can or it's someone in an abusive relationship trying to get out of, or whatever the case may be. Everybody has a story as to why they are where they are. And just because you see someone in life doing very well, or they seem like they have everything in life that they could possibly want, or they have everything in life that you want that you don't have, you never know where they came from or what they had to do to get to where they are or what struggles they had. You just, you just never know. And you just, once you sit and listen to someone's story, you'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. But sometimes we look at people and say, 
They have everything in life. Why are they so upset? Why are they so miserable? They have all the money in the world. They have this or that. And, you know, <clears throat> it's one thing I know. Money does not buy happiness. What money gives you or buys you, if it buys you anything, is freedom to find out what makes you happy. Because most of the time, y'all, we're at work. I'm at work 12 hours a day. Most of us have jobs. You know, we don't have time to figure out what makes us happy because we're at work. We're doing this, we're doing that, running a household, working all day long. Money just buys you the freedom to figure out what makes you happy. And what I mean by that is if you have money and you don't have to be at a job all day long, focusing on your job or or, or that, you could focus on what makes you happy. But most of us can't because we've got other stuff going on. So, you know, you see people who have seemingly have everything that they could possibly want and they're still unhappy because they haven't figured out what makes them happy. Money very rarely makes people happy. Yeah, you may be able to go on vacation or buy some things you've always wanted to buy, but it very rarely makes you truly happy. Um, it makes life a little bit easier if you have money, that's for sure, but it very rarely makes you happy. You know? Very rarely. So, just can't think it's because somebody has this or that that they should be happy. Because I think, in our minds, we think, well, if I had all that money, I would be happy. You don't know that because you don't have it. So, how, how would you know that? <laughs> how would you know that? If I hit the lottery tomorrow, I would be happy. Yeah, you would be happy in the moment. We all would be in the moment. But then... You know, other stuff starts to happen and come up that money can't take care of, you know? So, just got to understand where other people are coming from. <laughs> And I know firsthand, if you don't have your health, you have nothing. If you don't have your health, you have all the money in the world. All the money in the world you can have. If you don't have your health, or if money can't fix your health, and you don't have anything. Because if you're not, if you're too sick to enjoy your money, what good is it? <laughs> you know? If you're going to have all this money and your health is bad and your kids are spending all your money because you got bad health, what good is it? You know? I don't Listen, I don't want my kids spending all my money. If I ever get my hands on a ton of money, I don't want my kids spending all my money. I want to be able to enjoy it too. Like what happens? People in these nursing homes, these elderly people who have money and they're stuck in a nursing home. What do you think their kids are out there doing? Who have control of their finances or who are guardians or trustees to their parents or whoever, estates and stuff. They're out there spending that money, honey, and you're sitting here in a nursing home. Trust me. It happens. It happens. Take care of yourself. I know there are some things that are out of our control that we can't control. 
I know that things happen to us that we can't control. I understand that and I know that. But do whatever you can to keep yourself as healthy as you can. So then when you get to be old, you can enjoy your money and your kids are not out there spending it up. Sticking you in a nursing home and coming to see you once a year on Christmas. Mm -mm, that's not what you want. Not a pretty picture. People don't want to believe that that actually happens, but it happens every single day. And I know they have this saying that if you take care of your kids, your kids will take care of you. Yeah, we like to believe that, but that's not always the case. No? Because when you think about it, when we have children, we have an obligation to take care of them. We have, it's 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 our our duty to take care of them. You know, we birth them. We have to take care of them. Our children are not obligated to take care of us. They're they're just not. So, okay, okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to cut this video here. We are 21 minutes in. It's a long lunch and chat. I'm going to go ahead and cut this video here. It is long enough. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for having lunch with me. I enjoyed our chat. Those are what's coming in. I have enjoyed our chat. So I'm going to sign off here. I'm going to finish up my piece of chicken and my tuna. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Take care. And have a great rest of your day. Bye now.